Um, yeah, I, I'm sorry, I just, uh, just came over, just needed to somehow jump in quickly. And uh, yeah, um, interesting to hear at least the last, uh, the last sentences. Uh, it is always good to, to have, uh, you know, the more that we are, the better it is on the, on the decentralized finance uh, front. And um, I, wanted to, uh, I wanted to give you guys a, an overview of what we are doing, what, what I'm thinking of, what I'm believing in. And yeah, then let's hopefully uh, have some good questions. Um, so basically, my, the, the question is always, why do you do what you do, right? Um, my personal target is to give every company a possibility, small companies, medium-sized companies, and I want them to have the possibility to do fundraising by issuing security tokens in Switzerland and no matter where the company is originally based from. And the cost of that should net out the lower, uh, the ones of another country. Now, coming from Switzerland, you maybe know that the cost is of course always a, a, an important thing, but I think that we can, uh, we can reach this thing and um but let me tell you where where we're starting off from this um i originally so i'm felix i'm originally coming from uh from the traditional capital market side um i'm uh, with uh, decent now in zug that's in the crypto valley of switzerland and well before i was with uh, decent i started actually working in investment banking uh at one of the two big swiss banks now Right in the beginning, uh, when I was starting, that was 2008. So in September, when Lehman's Brothers went uh, bankrupt, that was when I was just starting a month before that. And uh, then one month later, of course, we had, uh, we had the, the white paper published um, on, on Bitcoin. So it was definitely a time, a very, very exciting time to get going. Um, and where, where, was, where was I starting first? It was corporate finance. So we already did, back then, we already did the capital raisings for companies, um, it was mostly large companies, but uh, we also have some successful placement on somewhat, you know, well, you would most likely count them already to, to, to large companies, um, but, you know, larger medium-sized companies. Now, the problem was we had, we had a couple of cool deals going on and we were raising capital for, for these companies, but there was always one problem. It was the size. You know, a big bank, um, investment banking, they don't offer this to, to medium-sized companies. So um, basically the, 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 the transaction itself is a very complicated one. You need to have the the bankers, the lawyers, the auditors, everything already in the bank. And then also you need the, the external advisors, right? And that of course is, uh, that of course is a very expensive um, thing. Now, uh, the problem of this was that the, the bank was not able to charge above a certain percentage. So in order to remain profitable, but still have a low percentage fee, the minimum size needed to be quite large. It was well above 50 million. Uh, on company sales, it was like 100 million upwards, and on private placements, it was like 80 million or 60 million dollars upwards, and uh, that is of course the difficulty on that side. So the the difficulty was okay, how can we do that? Because we have many clients which were fundraising, but they needed uh, 10, 20, 30, 50 million, and even those we were unfortunately not able to deal uh, or to deal with. So we, back in the days, that was kind of an innovative solution that we said. Uh, we said, hey, we've got the big uh, investment bank, we've got the asset management, we've got the private banking, let's bring all of this together. And we're basically uh, offering our network. Um, we kind of created a setup where uh, you could present your, your opportunity, your investment opportunity. And then uh, it was a little bit like Airbnb you could connect the parties, but Airbnb doesn't really get active in it. It is really, um, it is really the, uh, the, the parties which need to negotiate the price, uh, get the pricing right and everything. Now, what we were offering was this network and that was a pretty good, uh, that was already a pretty good setup 
because we got quite some deals done. However, um, when, you, when you don't have the deal team in place, which is monitoring the whole thing, which is leading the whole uh, transaction, which is guiding it, that is of course a difficult situation and that pretty much rules out all the companies which are, which are, uh, which are not a fit to the other party, right? Because you don't have a negotiator in the middle. That's one of the roles, one of the many roles that a bank uh, is, is doing. Now, even with a relatively simple situation like that, it was difficult to get a deal done. And, um, and we obviously had to um, uh, add, uh, you know, even in a simple setup where you had a one buyer and one seller, there uh, it was partially possible, but partially it was difficult to get the people on board. Now, if you've got more, many, uh, many buyers, potential buyers, different strategic buyers or financial investors and so on, you need to orchestrate the whole thing. So that is pretty much where it kind of falls apart. Now, what was, there, what was happening there? The financial tri um, crisis was just starting. And uh, with that, however, uh, Bitcoin was created and the distributed ledger technology that was finding a way before that was a logic, right? It was a, it was a thought, it was a theory, a vision. Now with that, uh, finally, we found a case, a use case, uh, and could come up with a, with a product, right? Like a motor came up with a Bitcoin, and, uh, but it still did take quite a while until really Bitcoin could be taken seriously from a financial uh, point of view, from a finance industry point of view. And um, that was basically when more and more people were talking about it, how can we use the blockchain technology in order to do, uh, to have the stable coins, Tether was already in place, uh, what other ones are coming up then, uh, how can we trade it, how can we raise funds, and how can we tie it to assets? And that is basically the magical, the magical thing which happened, um, it already started a bit before 2015, 2015 were the very early uh, news on that. But 2070, that was pretty much where I got uh, got involved in that from the fundraising side. And of course, that was the that was the the ICO time. We got uh, we had crazy fundraisings going on, and uh, the companies didn't have value behind. There was no technology there. The business or the idea was was just a very general thing, and it was not tied really to the token sold. So it was really the, the demand and supply, or well, in this case, mostly the, the demand, which was driving the prices and so, and so on. But it didn't have to do with the, with the regular fundraising of a company where you still need to come up with, a, with an offering, right? Now, the year was crazy, 2017, we've got, uh, we've got uh, um, uh, how much did we have? 2017 and 2018, we got 7 billion funds raised, in 2018, we had 19 million uh, US do billion US dollars raised, and that was a huge size for this industry. And uh, this new, this new Bitcoin world or this uh, uh, this cryptocurrency world was uh, was getting hyped and everything. But if you compare it to the traditional market, um, altogether until today, or actually until last end of last year. Um, in all of the ICOs and all the STOs, the funds raised there were 31 billion US dollars. Now that's a pretty sizable size uh, for, for a new market as, as ours is. But if you compare it, uh, eBay has that market capitalization, uh, General Motors has that couple of market capitalization, and others, FedEx amongst others. Now, what that is that is the income side oh sorry that's the equity side but besides that we've got even a much bigger market which is the fixed income side not talking about about uh, commodities or real estate and real estate is really the biggest market in the doll um there of course more and more um uh, tokenization themes are coming up and um and that is where I actually um, see the, the real value. It is not with the, with the huge corporates or the national actors which are giving out bonds. And then we talk about a, a, uh, a tokenized uh, bond. Um, the big actors, they already have their market in place and it is not that expensive. It is quite difficult to compete with that setup that is in place there. Um, 
I'm not saying that there are not uh, some actors active. We know some, especially the, the, the stock exchanges, the traditional stock exchanges and so on, some of the big banks. They're of course working on their own setup and trying to improve it, putting into place uh, blockchain solutions and using the technology um, in order to, to go ahead there. So that is of course a very good point, but I see the really real uh, value added for small and medium sized companies, especially the medium sized companies. Now, me of course, I've got the background in that. We did some placements and it was quite difficult to, to get it done because of the limitations. Only when they were big enough, that is when we really got the, them, them off the ground. Now, is that okay to only deal with the big companies? I mean, they are making up two thirds of the GDP of, of developed companies, uh, countries. Um, that is one, one important point, yes. However, 99% of all the companies are small and medium sized companies. And two thirds of all the employees are working in these companies. So if you think of it from a little bit different point of view, I'm not just thinking of it as a bank, okay, who is the big client which is paying me the money, but how much does that M actually um, count in the society? How much is the economic value of that? That is still one third of the GDP of, uh, of uh, countries, right? So that is really where, where I think the, the financial institutions are, uh, are in the difficult positions because they, knew they required the minimum size. And that is where we, are, uh, we can get more, more active and, um, and, and look, okay, where can one position uh, oneself? Now, if you look at the, the medium-sized companies, um, how can they get funding? Either they, they go via a bank loan, uh, which is quite difficult, Throughout the, oh, the whole of the last decade, we had the quantitative easing and other supportive actions of central banks in place. How much did it help? Well, the, 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 uh, the, the general funding rate is low, but that doesn't really uh, feed through, right? We're criticizing the, the uh, national banks since a decade that they cannot really get it going because they cannot get the banks to, um, to give out loans. Now, are the, the, the uh, banks the faulty ones? I don't really think so. Of course, you can improve it and you should improve it quite a lot, but uh, it is a very complex process to, to put that in place. You need to have, you need to make sure that everything is in line of the company, of the issuing company with their business operations, with their cash flows, their liabilities. And then you need to have everything, uh, everything legally set up. Uh, that is when you, when you have the legal actors coming in place and you need to register, for example, on the small company that is not like, like a company which is listed on the stock exchange and you can just buy a share from your bank. You actually, with a medium-sized company, you need to get them registered with a, with a company registry. And these are really difficult. Uh, these are really challenges that, um, that are, are difficult to overcome. However, this is where we saw the possibility and especially um, giving access to, to the companies and to making them big and to provide growth financing for a medium-sized company or also a small-sized company, which is in a growth phase, is going into Series A funding, and, uh, and that is what we, what we wanted to put in place. Now, this was two years ago already. Um, we created Descent. Um, it's a one-stop shop um, capital raising platform, mostly for SME companies. We're uh, able here, we're based in, in Switzerland, um, and here we're able to structure a token, um, which is a financial instrument, it's a Swiss financial instrument, which is in line with all the regulations of the Swiss uh, regulatory body. Now, this of course gives you a, a protection and uh, all the investors are just as protected as, as on, on a stock which is listed on the, on the six or any other stock exchange. Now, um, that is really one of the, uh, and then this protection, that is really a very important thing because back in 2017, we didn't have the, the legal setup in place, right? Um, ICO, ICO market was going crazy and every company was, was doing crazy fundraising there and you didn't have any investor protection in place. Now in Switzerland, we've got, uh, we've got, we saw this as a big advantage 
to to have uh, to have a cooperation with the regulator with the state itself um, our company is one of the founding members of swiss blockchain federation that is a, uh, it's, a it's a private uh, public partnership where we're working together with the government basically in the adoption of the regulatory setup um, for security tokens now this was two years ago by now we already have a, a solid uh, regulation in place and um, we always need to know that we always need to keep in mind that switzerland for tokenization is anyway in our opinion a very good place because it is anyway the asset management hub for the world almost half of all the assets under management in switzerland come from abroad so that means that uh, swiss banks are doing one third of their business of their asset management is is cross-border servicing now that means that uh, contrary to a couple of other countries just here in europe or of course us would be a totally different uh, story or also in, in in asia some very regulated uh, uh, places like like singapore for example you don't have that access to to cross-border uh, to cross-border servicing on the financial side for fundraising now that gives the, the Swiss capital markets an unprecedented access to the world. And that is what we are wanting to make, uh, to make available to the issuers on the one side from abroad and the investors on the other side. Now, the country itself, it's, like it's quite a powerhouse on the financial industry as such a, as a asset management hub. And um, it can act as a catalyst for these companies. And that's really one of the points um, that makes a difference to other companies or countries here in Europe, which are now more and more also getting, getting active. Um, besides that, we always keep in mind the Swiss security token, that's a trust that has a trust associated with it by the investors, by the regulation that it comes, that it is tied to. And that is what the investors are also re relying to. And not only the, real, uh, the investors, but also the regulators and the issuers that can be sure that, hey, two, three one years down the road, this is going to be something that is, uh, that is uh, going to hold. Now, let me just quickly, um, sorry, let me just open a, a presentation. I just needed to reconnect a second before we, <laughs> we started. Can you see the, the, the screen? Excellent. So basically what we have put in place is a one-stop shop for the whole for the whole process. It starts with the financial instrument design. We're creating the, the security token offer, uh, the security token. That can be any asset class, well, almost any asset class, equities, bonds, participations. Um, these, are, these are the deals that we have already uh, done. Um, that is what we put in place. On the issuance side, we've got, uh, we've got a tool that is token gate. And um, that is what, uh, what, is, um, what is really a, the one-stop shop thinking is coming exactly therein. Um, it is the issuance. In that part, you need to have the onboarding of the clients, which is uh, which needs to be fully in line with the financial regulation. Um, we have uh, our our onboarding tool is not only a KYC tool, but it also has uh, anti-money laundry um, uh, uh, servicing in it. It is fed by different uh, databases and so on. And actually, that tool it is not just we're not just saying that hey, we've got one of these other. KYC tools that are in existence in a huge abundance in the world, um, but really the AML side that is really putting a, a difference to it, and it is good enough so that two Swiss banks are actually using it, partially in house where we were tailoring it to them, and the other one they just use it off the off the shelf basically. So it is in line with all uh, on the Finma our Swiss financial market authority regulation. And, um, and that is really showing the capabilities of it. Now, 
you've got the sales side where you've got the the payment which is uh, which is uh, um, executed by that you've got cryptocurrency uh, inflow you've got uh, fiat currency inflow and there you've got a dashboard which is giving you the whole payment overview every single incoming transaction is being checked for the legitimacy of the client is it already approved by the compliance manager uh, the compliance officer um, and especially on the crypto side we also have a forensic tool which is checking every single thing every single payment comes into a into a segregated account where it is not mixed together it's not coming into uh, into a, a tumbler mixer where it uh, gets together mixed together with the other bitcoin or ether or, or uh, ethereum or whatever um, uh, bit, uh, whatever cryptocurrency is used so there also the the issuer has a protection to only let in what is really approved. Now, uh, besides that, we're supporting on the sales side. We're, 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 uh, we're having a tool there in place. We're connecting the, uh, the, the, the issuers with peers and um, we're working together with, uh, with, uh, with partners. We've got a partner, a strategic partner, where we, whereby we can offer OTC trading even. Um, on other parts, which are not internal, storage or onboarding onto exchanges of course that is that is of course an external uh, factor however token gate and our our setup here at decent that is really um uh, covering the whole life cycle management and it doesn't stop at the at the primary market the important part comes here with the secondary market uh, of course with security tokens we know that the secondary market the life cycle management that is an absolutely important point in it if it is a dividend payment or it is a voting right, if it is a, if it is a um, cash flow uh, participation distribution or, it is a, or is it a coupon payment. So this is, let me check my slides here, sorry. So that is basically, that is basically what we put in place. And this is what we use as a, this is what we offer as a service, as, an, uh, as, a, as a software, as a service. Um, it can, the client has, the issuer has everything fully in scope. And that is really where, where it is differentiating itself from some other, uh, so from some other um, providers or some other tools that, that others are using. Now, um, uh, sorry, what is what is an important part is uh, in this, I mentioned the OTC trading and uh, some other parts. We are the, the partnerships which are in place. Those are very important to make the whole thing uh, running, right? You can try to do everything in-house, but then you're basically trying to do exactly the same thing as an investment bank is doing. And that is exactly one of the reasons why uh, why the cost and the and the workflow and everything is so complex on that side and it is it is limiting it. Now we have got we've got the we've got everything uh, covered as a one-stop shop on the technical uh, execution side. We can the the, uh, the client can can monitor and organize and lead the whole process by himself. But it doesn't stop there. Um, the company is using TokenGate. Um, they get also the access to legal advisors, crypto bank friendly banks, distribution partners, um, uh, uh, supporting on the marketing side, we're working together with PR agencies, we're having partnerships in place, and so on. Now, besides that, um, we are part of a, of a group, we've got a network, uh, quite strong network on that side, uh, CVVC Summit is the oldest crypto uh, asset and blockchain summit existing in Switzerland. One of the older, oldest ones in Switzerland, uh, ones in, in Europe. Um, it has been around for five years now. Um, sorry, for four years now. And um, uh, we're ho holding it twice a year. Once in Zug, which is our home base, uh, the Crypto Valley of Switzerland. And once a year at the World Economic Forum in Davos. Now, besides this, we're working together with the transactional bank, which is the transaction bank of a multitude of uh, private bank and, uh, and state banks uh, in Switzerland. So they are the execution partner. We can guarantee that the, uh, that the transactions are going through and we have the full banking, uh, uh, the banking connection on that side. 
which is important. Um, many, uh, maybe some of you know how it is, of if it is on the ICO side or the STO side, um, fiat payments getting through, crypto payments getting transferred in fiat, banks blocking the issuer, uh, the provider, the exchange, um, we've seen all of that in the past. Now this is, this is where it gets important to put in place a, a setup with, for example, a transactional bank, which is doing this as their, as their, um, as their daily business. Um, besides that, we're working together with, uh, with credit management service providers and so on, so that everything is really uh, coming from one hand, you can have it, and it is a one-stop shop which is especially the important part for, for non-Swiss or not European companies, that they have it all in one case. Now, I managed, I told you about what, uh, what, what things we're offering. Um, hopefully this sounds good, but how does it look in practice? You know, everybody's presenting quite a lot of things um, now, and when it comes down to the reality, that is where really the, the actors are quite different from each other. Now, what I want to tell you is about, is about a, a Bolivian agricultural company um, that we're doing a fundraising. Um, that is, we are having the advantages in, here in Switzerland, and we want to give this potential of the new capital market, we want to make it accessible to other companies in the world, right? Latin, Asia, all of Europe, um, all the countries where it is possible, where we don't have legal restrictions, and that is still quite a lot. Uh, which are possible. So now this company is not a startup. It has been around for over 20 years. It is cash flow positive. It has uh, over 3,200 hect hectares of, of land, uh, acres I think in, of land. Um, and it, has, it is an agricultural co uh, company with cattle, over 4,300 uh, uh, cows. And that is, that is a successful company, which has been around for over 20 years. It is employing employee. It is an employee, and it is an important one in the in the local region. So, why can they not get access? You know, they're big enough. They've got cash flow. They've got. They are big from the size. The assets are there. Why can they not get the the fun, uh, financing like we would hope it to be? Um, the problem is that even if you've got all the factors, the important factors are in place. Um, it is still a developing economy and you still have huge limitations. Um, on, the, on the local side, you have very difficult, you have got even more difficulties to get to, to a bank loan or similar credit uh, lines uh, from traditional banking. That is even more difficult. And then angel investors, venture capital investors, uh, or similar actors are much even more limited. First of all, they are, uh, they are more difficult to find uh, the connection point is the difficult part in it, and then um, it is difficult to fit into their portfolio. Now, that is that is applicable for for venture capital companies, which would be still the the most the most uh, uh, adept to to finance such a growth uh, financing. Um, but the, uh, with, for example, private equity actors, it gets even more difficult. And there, the minimum size is again coming in. Usually, that is the funding from 5 million, 10 million uh, is usually too small. 20 to 30 million, that is where it gets more interesting. Um, now, but how can we solve this situation? We're, we're doing it with Switzerland. We're coming here in with the offer. We have created a company, a uh, setup for the, whole, for the company where the whole security tokenization is done not in Bolivia, but in Switzerland. It is a Swiss security token. It, is, um, it has all the legal regulation behind it as, the, the, uh, as a standard uh, Swiss security. And um, in Switzerland, we have the private money anywhere in the world. I mentioned the asset managers, the family offices, uh, two thirds of the globe's uh, funds are within Switzerland. And that is really, uh, which is allowing a, a totally different access to the, to the capital markets. Um, on, with the blockchain technology, we have a lot of technical advantages that we can use, and we're, uh, we're making this acceptable uh, to countries throughout the, throughout the world. How many other block countries? 
about a third or so is blocked for either from the regulatory side or from banking side, from fiat uh, uh, fundraising side. Now, what we, can, what we can still have is two thirds of the globe is accessible for fundraising from Switzerland with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, for a foreign company. Now, um, this is what we have created for this company. The deal is up and running. It is a successful deal. And really this, when it comes, when you, when you look at the company, what are you really doing? Are you just presenting a cool fundraising? And this is another cool story where you're doing fundraising, you're raising 5 million, 10 million US dollars for a growth company. And that is then going to, to continue in the, in the future. Yes, that's of course a great thing for a financial actor. But if you look a little bit beyond that, and that is the hope in this, this group and in, uh, within our industry as well, that we look a little bit uh, beyond our, uh, our, our, uh, our typical view. And we see that, hey, here we're supporting a company which is an, uh, which is an employer. It's a really important uh, actor in the region. And uh, if we get that done, then that is what makes me proud and the colleagues proud that we can be part of this and that we can get this ahead. And I think that is a very, very important point that we have this in place and we structure it in a way that, um, that gets the companies going. And whether it is in LATAM, in Bolivia in this case, or it is Asian companies, uh, or it is in Switzerland or European companies, um, it is open. We've got deal, uh, we've got pipeline deals or already some done in the real estate, in agriculture as this year one, tech companies in Switzerland, in Asia. And that is, I think, what we need to create, what we need to continue to create together. And um, by this, we are creating really the infrastructure for a new capital market, uh, which will hopefully help uh, companies to grow in the future. So are there any questions specifically to the deal or, or I don't know. We need to check also who is then coming next. Any questions there? Seems to be very clear, hopefully. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Felix. Gary, thank you very much.